Hello again folks, in tonight's video I'm going to be doing my budget multimeter showdown that I said I was going to do in my previous video. But before I do that, I'm going to do the price drop for competition time number 7. So we'll head on over to commentpicker.com, paste in the URL and click go. And that tells me that 55 of you have entered. So we'll click start and pick a winner. So good luck to everybody that entered. And the winner is Martin Oldfield. After your review, I ordered one. And after your teardown, happy I did. Thank you. Well, there you go, Martin. You have won. So what I'd like you to do is uh, go over to my YouTube channel. Probably best to do it on uh, a desktop machine or a laptop, something like that. Uh, click on the About page or tab and click Send Message. Uh, and just uh, if Martin Oldfield isn't your real name and it does happen occasionally <laughs> give me your full name and uh, mailing address and i will get a little package in the post to you with some uh, electronic goodies uh, worth mentioning if you just put what's at a level of electronics you're into and i'll try and tailor it appropriately okay folks congratulations ma'am so i'm um, on to the uh what did I say it was? Uh, showdown, yeah, the showdown. Yeah, all four of these meters in front of you here um, will do what they're supposed to do for us, the hobbyists. Um, yeah, they, they, they will measure voltage, measure current, all that good stuff, and they'll do it fairly accurately, I think. Um, certainly close enough for, for hobbyists' needs. Um, but I thought, just out of interest, well, more for curiosity, um, I just wondered how accurate a cheap meter actually is. Um, now, I'm not going to be spending thousands of pounds of uh, on equipment to, to test the accuracy. What I've spent is £13 on one of these AD584 based um, voltage references. And what a voltage reference is, uh, well in this case it's this little metal can that you can probably just see in the bottom there with the holes around it. Um, that's essentially um, a voltage, an accurate voltage divider. Um, so a little network of resistors splitting the voltage into 2.55, 7.5 and 10 volts. Um, and, and, and they're, they're fairly accurate. That is their purpose. Um, and the the you know the Chinese manufacturers are doing. Um, I think most of the time they're actually second hand uh, references. So maybe they've slightly drifted out of spec, something like that. They reuse them and you know manufacture them into a product like this, which is absolutely perfect for the hobbyist. You know, as a hobbyist, this is you know the best you're going to get really for the for the price. Um, and you know they do calibrate it so I, I mentioned the voltages there that's the selectable voltages here and they have hooked this up to an Agilent uh, what is it a 34401A which is probably 100, 120 times the price of the, the Anang here um, and they basically record the the uh, the voltage that's actually measured um, and ideally that is the voltages we would want to see on our meters um, so that's what we're going to do uh, in this uh, video. We're going to go through each meter in turn, uh, going from the, the newest one I've purchased, so this is the newest one I've purchased to the oldest one that I've had for you know probably 10 or 15 years now. Um, we're going to select uh, each of those four voltages on each of the four meters, record them in a, a table, and then basically from that work out which is the most accurate. Following me so far? Um, Okay, right, we'll crack on. So, if I get everything out of the way, uh, we're going to start off with Anang. And here is my rather poor chart. Um, you can tell I've been using a computer for over 35 years, can't you? Um, yeah, should be a fairly straightforward task. So, we'll take our uh, meter, we'll take a voltage reference. Um, before I start, I'll just I'll quickly make... Uh, uh, take you through how it works. So you, you press and hold the button to, to turn it on. You can see 2.5 volt outputs on and it's just a single click to to cycle through those uh, different voltage outputs. Press and hold it to turn off. That's it. Simple as that. It does have a LiPo battery in there. Uh, it is a protected cell as you can probably just see the protection uh, circuitry there. Um, charged by micro USB. Uh, blue LED for uh, charging indication. And that's pretty much it. Um, obviously, get a little bit of circuitry on there to 
um, help the switching etc but yeah fairly straightforward and it's held in this uh, or enclosed in this nice laser cut acrylic I actually quite like this um, although it does look like it's been cobbled together it's great for a, a new hobbyist because they can actually see it uh, and see what's inside it without actually taking it to bits um, right rambling on let's crack on and uh, see how it works okay so plug it in turn it on uh, so that's 2.5 volts selected hopefully you can see that there we go dc voltage plug it in 2.500 okay right i'm um, sorry just to cut back just one second as you can see these go up to five decimal places uh, the highest my meters go up to three decimal places so i've only written down as you can see here the, the three decimal places just to make it a bit easier to work out so on to five volts 5.004 seven and a half volts is 7.50 And 10 volts is 9.99. Okay, all right, remove that off. On to the uh, 830B. This is the cheapest. You can pick these up for uh, two, two to three pounds, including delivery. And we'll start off again with two and a half volts. And that's displaying 2.45. Of course, it would change as I uh, as I uh, flipped it over. Um, five volts is displaying four point nine two, seven and a half, seven point three eight, and ten volts nine point eight four. On to the ninety seven now, which is my. I'd say my second favourite after the Anning. Uh, having only had Anning a couple of weeks now, I have to say I'm, you know, just to, you know, say again, I am genuinely impressed with it. Um, turn it on. Plug it in. And go to a two and a half volt range. Uh, two point four nine three. Four point nine nine. 7.48 9.98 and last but not least the old uh, Velamin or Maplin um, DVM 68 ok 2.503 5.03, 7.53, and last but not least, 10.03. Right, turn it off, get it out of the way, and what we're going to do now is um, basically rank them, uh, compare the uh, displayed voltage to the reference voltage and work out which is the most accurate uh, across the range okay so 2.499 yep yeah. anang number one um, four nine, so that's within point zero zero six uh, sorry yeah yeah point zero zero six uh, that is point that's four so yeah that's number two the old uh, Velamin so that was three that means that the 830 is in fourth position on that so the Anang on the 5 volt range 5.001004 that's zero three so that's a one that's a two um, that's a three and that's a four seven and a half volt uh, absolutely bob on on that that's point zero 
two, so that's our second place. That's our third, and again, the eight thirties in fourth position. Uh, ten volts, uh, ten point zero zero, so that's point zero one. So that's one. That's yeah, zero to point zero two. three and that is where that's point one six so there we have it um that's our data analysis complete um, for what it's worth and as you can see a clear winner the aneng 8001 uh come in on first place on accuracy um yeah not a lot in it point zero zero one in some instances uh, i think the highest so, off is what point point zero one of a volt absolutely superb accuracy for a budget meter 10 pounds remember this cost that uh, really really good um second place um we've got three twos on there on the vc97 that is my uh, was originally my go-to meter um uh, until i got that but it's now my second place meter and you know based on that you know it is second place in terms of accuracy um yeah, the old 10, 15 year old development. Yeah, it's, it is 10 or 15 year old. It's still fairly accurate. Not not too much in it. Um, again, 0 0.03 of a volt. You know, 0 0.004 of a volt, whatever. Fairly accurate for an older meter. And last place is the 2.5 quid um, 830B. Yeah, you'd expect it to be in last place. It is a really super budget meter. But... Look, in the grand scheme of things, 0 0.04 of a volt off there, 0 0.08, you know, it's it's not it's not hugely off, is it? Um, if you were making little flashing electronic LED kits or just getting into electronics, it's pocket money. It's it's less than pocket money nowadays. It's a super well, it's not a superb little meter. It's a superb meter for the price. You know, the fact that you can purchase a meter for for less than the price of a coffee including delivery it's 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 okay um but it is at least accurate what, what more can i say about it um other than reiterating with all budget meters don't use it on high current don't use it in high voltage be sensible so what would my recommendation be um i, I you know the, no question about it it's the 8001 from aneng you know, for the price, ten pounds. Remember, ten pounds including delivery. Um, you can get it off Banggood. Um, you can get the the eight thousand and two or eight thousand and four. I think it is. I had a look just before making this video. That's the one that's got the temperature sensing and uh, sorry, temperature measurement, etc. Uh, just twelve, eleven or twelve pounds including delivery uh, to the United Kingdom, and of course it's free worldwide shipping. So I think it was around maybe $16, something like that. I'm not too sure what the, the current exchange rate is. But for the price, yeah, definitely this meter. The only thing it's not really got, I would suggest, other than the temperature, is uh, it's not got a transistor tester. Um, I'm not going to say you would never need to test a transistor, but for the kind of stuff that, that you or I, as a basic hobbyist, is going to be doing, you know, you're buying bags of transistors, 50 or 100 transistors from China for you know three pounds or something do you really want to test the transistor P yes possibly there's instances where you would um if it's something that's obviously blown you know if a transistor's blown or whatever and it's obvious it's blown yes there may have been a reason uh, for it to to have blown um but ultimately it's just going to need replacing um maybe if you've sort of vintage transistors or vintage equipment you might want to test them in that instance and you know you know it, I personally don't use a transistor tester on a multimeter. Never have, and I can't ever uh, think of a reason why I would use it. Um, I suppose it's just this uh, disposable uh, society we, we live in now. You know, so cheap just to take it off and put a new one on. Anyway, I, I think I've laboured that point quite enough. But yeah, definitely, this is what I would go for. Um, followed closely, uh, setting by the, the VC97. Um, bit bulkier, a bit more I wouldn't say it's a better looking meter. I think the Aneng is a is a nice you know, it's quite aesthetically pleasing, it's quite ergonomic. Um it's smaller, you know, it's 
it's a nice little meter. The the VC97, I, I'm not going to say it looks more the part. It's it's a nicer display, I think probably. Um, you know, bright. It's not got as good a count on it as well. Uh, a good account uh, as the as the Anine's got. So, yeah, I think I've <laughs> yeah, I think I've exhausted my praise for this. It's a great little meter. Uh, I would definitely recommend it. So there we go. Um, hopefully you found that interesting. Um, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. If you did, as always, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. If you haven't already done so and you'd like to do so, click on my fat head here and subscribe. Thank you very much um, to the, I think, 1,800 subscribers I've got now. Thanks to each and every one of you for supporting my channel um, and continuing to support my channel. Um, and I hope to be doing a few more videos uh, or more regular videos uh, in the near future for you. Until next time, guys, as always, take care of yourselves and all the best.